When aquatic biologist Pam Montbach gets to work, there are thousands of hungry mouths to feed. Hungry mouths of jellyfish, that is. I grow and keep all of our jellyfish that we have, so um, I, I culture them. It's called culturing um, the jellyfish. Take them from little polyps and grow them all the way up into the larger animals that you see on exhibit. There are about 1,500 species of jellyfish, also called jellies, and they're found in oceans all over the world. Jellyfish are considered um, plankton, so they really are at the mercy of the currents of the ocean. Um, they do have some pulsing movement that helps them orient themselves in the water, make sure they're um, going in the right direction, but for the most part, um, they sort of drift with the currents. Their pulsing not only helps them move, it also helps them capture prey. Jellies are what we call cruising predators, so basically they just kind of cruise around and whatever they um, run into is what they eat. And their pulsing helps them to create a, a current that draws the animals, draws the plankton up into their tentacles and into their oral arms and their mouths. Here at the Academy, a special milkshake made with brine shrimp and squid provides everything a growing jelly needs and is squirted into their mouths. I was doing what's called target feeding, so I was just making sure that each of the animals was getting a large amount of food and that helps to make them grow a little bit faster and I'm, I'm making sure they get a, a really large amount of food all at once. The jellies all need to be fed twice a day, so I feed in the mornings and I feed um, at the end of the day. I also have to clean all of the tanks and maintain all of the life support systems, so um, that requires me to clean filter socks and protein skimmers and um, make sure the pumps are all working correctly. Healthy jellies means lots more jellies, and they have the ability to reproduce both sexually and asexually. They release what's called a planula. It's like a little fuzzy tic-tac, microscopic, and it sort of swims around. It has little cilia, and it swims around until it finds some place to land. And once it lands, it turns into a polyp. These polyps can bud off and then release ephyra, which are very small jellyfish. Jellyfish, as their name implies, are not actually fish. They're invertebrates that belong to a group called cnidaria. Like corals, they have stinging cells called nematocysts. Um, and when they uh, come in contact with prey, the nematocyst fires, and it's like a long harpoon that injects into the prey. And um, most jellies have toxin that is injected into the prey. These stinging cells are not only used for prey capture, but for defense against predators. That's a defense mechanism, um, as many people find out when they're swimming in the oceans. I have been stung very many times, too many times to count, um, probably almost every day. But Pam says that's just part of the job. While most jellies drift with ocean currents, one species has a different lifestyle. Upside-down jellies live in warm, shallow mangrove lagoons where they have a special relationship with a type of algae called zooxanthellae. Cassiopeia, the upside-down jellyfish, they lie on the sand um, with their zooxanthellae turned up towards the sun, basically just to absorb as much sunlight as possible. So the upside-down jelly gets the food from the algae as well as whatever it captures, um, prey floating by just like any other jellyfish. Pam's job is as diverse and interesting as the jellies she raises. Jellies are very simple animals and they're very delicate, but they're also very diverse. And it's interesting, I think, um, you know, I'm not doing the same thing day after day after day. I'm, I'm trying, trying new things with new animals all the time and, and different techniques to see um, how to best raise the animals. And I think they're, they're just really beautiful and captivating.